Hello and welcome to another Premiere Pro editing tutorial by Sturisium. In this video I'm going to teach you how to make a simple but interesting photo slideshow. In a few simple steps you can make your stills a lot less boring to watch. Just follow the steps in this tutorial and you should be able to create a similar slideshow like the one that you're watching now. And for this tutorial I'm using the beautiful images from our sponsor Envado Elements. Envado Elements is a great source for all your creative projects. They offer millions of high quality items like stock photos and videos, but also music and sound effects and fonts and much more. If you want to try them out then use the link in the video description to claim a discount on your first month. Ok, I hope you're ready, let's now head over to Premiere and start some editing. Inside Premiere we're going to start by creating a sequence. Here in the project panel click on the new icon and then select sequence. For this demo I'll use a 1080p 30fps sequence and I will rename this one to slideshow and then click OK. The next step is importing the files into Premiere. I've already selected a couple of images here inside this folder. I will just select a few of them and drag them over to the timeline inside Premiere. When I zoom in on the timeline you can see that every image gets a 5 second duration. That's because that is the default duration for an image on the timeline inside Premiere. If you want to change this you need to go to Edit, Preferences and then go to Timeline. In this window you could change the default duration for images if you like to. But for now I'll just leave it to 5 seconds and go back to the timeline. Ok, next we're going to look at the size of the images. First of all I would always recommend you to use images with the same size or dimensions. But of course that is not what I've got here. That's why we need to do the following steps first. We need to select all the images then right click and select Scale to Frame Size. This will resize all the images so they will fit in the frame. But the images do not have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So now we do have some black bars here on the side. To fix this we need to increase scaling inside the effects control panel until the image fills the entire frame. And this needs to be done on every photo on the timeline. So if you have a slideshow with 100 photos you might need a couple of minutes. In the next step we're going to duplicate all the images. We're going to select them all on the timeline. Hold the ALT key combined with the left mouse button and then drag them up to the track above. And then I'm going to disable this copy layer for now by using the toggle switch here. For the next step we need to deselect the images and only select the first one on the first layer. And then we're going to head over to the effects panel and we're going to search for the Gaussian blur effect. You will find this one under video effects blur and sharpen. I'm going to apply this one to the first image on the first layer of the timeline. And then head over to the effects control panel and increase blurriness to 400. And to get rid of the dark edges on the outside of the frame we need to select repeat edge pixels. Depending on the photos that you're using you might need to increase or decrease the blurriness. Anyway it should look something like this. Now we can select this effect and copy it by hitting ctrl plus C or command C for the Mac users. And then select all the other images on the first track of the timeline and hit ctrl plus V or command V to paste it. And now you can see that this nice gradient blurriness is applied to all the other images as well. Next we can turn on the second layer again by clicking on the visibility icon here. And then I will select the first image on the second track of the timeline and head over to the effects control panel. In here we're going to enable keyframes for scaling and then scale the image down until the top and bottom fills about 90% of the frame. This will be our last keyframe. We need another one so let's go a few frames back and then lower the scaling again. And with these two keyframes we've now created a simple zoom animation. Let's make this animation go a bit more smoother by right clicking on the first keyframe and then select ease out. And we'll select the second keyframe and select ease in. And I will also move them to the beginning and the end of the timeline. And as you can see now the foreground image zooms in very smoothly. And that is also what we want for the other images. So we're going to copy the motion section by hitting ctrl plus c or command c. And then select all the other images on the second track of the timeline and then hit ctrl V or command V to paste it. If I now scrub to the timeline you can see the same smooth animation on every photo. Ok, in the next step I'm going to add another effect and this time it will be the radial shadow. You can find this one under video effects perspective. And again I will only apply this to the first image on the second track for now. In the effects control panel we're going to play around with the settings. First I will select white for the shadow color. Then I'll set opacity to 100% and also change distance to 4. Then we also need to select resize layer and now we can play around with the light source. 
I'll keep changing the values of the light source until the borders are even on all sides of the photo. Ok, I think this should be enough for the sake of this tutorial. Next we're going to look for another effect called Drop Shadow. And this one can also be found in the video effects perspective. I will also apply this effect to the first image on the second track only for now. And in the effects control panel we're going to increase the distance and also increase softness. Just like I did before I'm going to copy these effects and paste them onto the other images. We can now select both effects by holding the control key, but please note that it is important to first select the radial shadow effect. In other words, the order of the effects will make this work or not. And then again hit Ctrl C or Command C to copy, select the other images and hit Ctrl V or Command V to paste. And now all the other photos also have the white border and the drop shadow. In the next step we're going to add a transition between the photos. In the effects panel we're going to search for the slide effect, you can find this under video transitions. You can now simply drag this effect over to the timeline and then position them between the images. And as you can see, this does exactly what it sounds like, it slides in the next photo. It's a basic but fast transition and you can also change the direction in the effects control panel. If you want to do this, you need to click on one of these small triangles here to change direction. And if you change direction, you need to do this on both tracks. Yes, it is a bit more work, but it's nice to have some variation, like sliding from the top to the bottom for example. And by the way, if you do have a lot of photos, you might want to set this as the default transition. This way you can simply select all the photos and then hit Ctrl, Shift plus D to add the default transition. In the final step of this tutorial, we're going to add 3D rotation. But before I do that, I need to mention that you should only do this if you have a powerful system. This is a heavy effect, so things can get really slow. That said, let's head over to the effects panel and search for the basic 3D effect. And again, you'll find this one under video effects perspective. I'm going to add this effect again to the first image on the second track and then head over to the effects control panel. And in here, we're going to enable keyframes for swivel and tilt. I will set swivel to 3 and I will set tilt to minus 3 and then move a couple of frames back and change the values to the opposite. So this means 3 for tilt and minus 3 for swivel. And with these keyframes we've now created this nice 3D animation. And of course we'll also make this one a bit more smoother by changing the keyframes to ease in and ease out. And I will also place the keyframes at the beginning and the end of the timeline. And now the final step is copying this effect with Ctrl C or Command C and then paste this onto the other images with Ctrl V or Command V. And as you can see, now all the photos have this nice 3D animation. I've got one more tip for you before we end this tutorial. As you can see here by this red line, the project requires to be rendered first before you can get some smooth playback. And to start rendering the effects, you can simply hit the enter key on your keyboard. Or you can go to sequence and then select render effects into out. Premiere will now start rendering the effects and after that the playback should be a lot smoother. And that also concludes this Premiere Pro tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did then please like the video or leave a comment below. Like always, thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.